Greetings, spooky fans! Michael here, and three, but essentially just two, because that's how this works, new Pokemon games were just announced. Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus. I am quite excited for these games, particularly Legends Arceus, or, excuse me, Arcus, but I do have some concerns about them. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are described as faithfully reproducing the original Sinnoh games. And overall, I think that's a great thing, but it does have me a tad worried. Diamond and Pearl are great games, but they do have some flaws that I'm concerned will be carried over into the remakes. Today I'm going to be going over the issues I have with the original Sinnoh games and how I think they could be remedied for the remakes. After that, I will discuss some other concerns I have with the upcoming games, just in general, that aren't specifically related to flaws with the original Sinnoh games and how I think those concerns could be mitigated. And don't worry, I'm not gonna just rag on everything the whole time. I'm gonna discuss some stuff that I like as well. Real quick before I dive in though, if you are watching this video on the day it comes out, today is the last day to pick up a trainer plushie of little me at mnjtvmerch.com, linked in the description below. Seriously, March 6th, end of the day, your chance is gone. So if you want one, you have to get it today. Click the link in the description below and get one and have a very cute, adorable friend to back you up in Pokemon battles. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because that's incredibly important as well. But let's dive into Sinnoh's biggest problems and how to fix them. First, let's cover the issues I have with the original Gen 4 Sinnoh games. And one of the biggest issues that I have with Diamond and Pearl was their Pokedex. It was terrible. The Diamond and Pearl Pokedex had 151 Pokemon in it, but basically just 150 since Manaphy is a mythical. So that makes its total about the same as the original games. However, it is horribly imbalanced. I made this spreadsheet of how many Pokemon of each type are present in the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex. And in case you're confused as to why the numbers might be larger than the total 150, it's because dual type Pokemon are counted twice. At the top, we have the water type, which has an absurd 33 Pokemon. 34 if you include Manaphy. That's over 20% of all Pokemon in the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex. You can't walk three feet without getting your socks wet because you got too close to a water type Pokemon. Now, I don't mind excessive water types. Most regions have a ton of water types. That just happens when you've got the whole ocean and then all the rivers and lakes to pick from. So I don't have a problem with there being a lot of water types. I have a problem with there being so many water types while other really important types end up barely having anything. There's only three fully evolved electric types in the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex. Luxray, Raichu, and Pachirisu. This forced the electric type gym leader, the last one, to have two Pokemon on his team that are not electric types. There's only two fully evolved ice types, Obama Snow and Weavile, which forced the ice type gym leader to use a freaking Metacham. And then, most egregious of all in my eyes, is the fire type, only having two fully evolved Pokemon, one being the starter Infernape. This means if you want to use a fire type on your team in Diamond and Pearl, and you don't want to pick Infernape, you literally have to use Rapidash. It also means that fire types make up less than half of the team of the fire type elite four member Flint. Lots of elite four members have teams that are not, in my eyes, properly balanced to their type specialty. Agatha only has three ghost types, Lance only has three dragon types, and their ghost and dragon types are entirely repeats. However, Flint is the only elite form member whose type specialty makes up less than half of his team. It's absurd. At the very least, they could have given him a second Rapidash, but no, here's a Lopany? Thankfully, Platinum came along and fixed Diamond and Pearl's terrible dex problem. For some unknown and deeply illogical and just dumb reason, whatever it was, most of the new evolutions of old Pokemon, like Gallade or Gliscor or Magmortar, were not included in the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex and could not be obtained until after you got the National Pokedex after beating the Pokemon League. Platinum remedied this by adding all those new evolutions and their pre-evolutions, plus some other old Pokemon like Altaria, Scizor, and Houndoom. 
This allowed for Candice, Volkner, and Flint to finally have teams wholly composed of their type specialty, and it allowed for more team choices for the player. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl must have the Platinum decks, not the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex. It would be a huge mistake to revert back to that imbalanced regional decks and cut out so many really cool Gen 4 Evolution Pokemon. Thankfully, I feel pretty good about the likelihood of the Platinum Dex being the one that's used, because Porygon Z, a Pokemon in the Platinum Dex, but not in the Diamond and Pearl Dex, was shown in the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl trailer. God, that is a mouthful. I need to just start, I, I'm gonna start abbreviating it BDSP. Just one letter away from something very different. Oh, also, Sylveon should be there in addition to the full Platinum Dex. It's the only new evolution for an older gen Pokemon added since Gen 4 that's not a Galar region specific evolution. And since the evolutions are part of the Platinum Dex, if they go with the Platinum Dex, they gotta have the other ones plus Sylveon. On the topic of evolutions, another issue I have with the original Sinnoh games is the screwing over of Glaceon. Now, Glaceon is not one of my favorite evolutions. I don't dislike it, but it doesn't really stand out to me, and it's certainly not one of the better ones in the battle department. However, if someone does like it and wants to use it in a playthrough team, I think they should be able to do so. However, in the majority of Pokemon games since its introduction, you just really can't. The reason for this is that in most games since Gen 4, Eevee has evolved into Glaceon by leveling up near an ice rock. However, the locations of the ice rocks in all the various games are way too freaking late. In Unova, the ice rock is in Twist Mountain, which is a post-game location for Black 2 and White 2, the Unova games that Glaceon is actually in. In Kalos, it's in Frost Cavern, a location after the sixth gym when your team is likely level 45. In Hoenn, it's in Shoal Cave, after the sixth gym with a team in its mid 30s. And in Alola, it's in Mount Lanakila, which is literally the victory road. And in the original Sinnoh games, which is Glaceon's home region, you still can't really use it. First off, it's not in the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex, but I already talked about that. But even in Platinum, it's impractical to use one. The Ice Rock is found on Route 217, the route leading to the seventh gym, where your team is likely in its late 30s or early 40s. I keep mentioning the team level for the Evolution evolutions because the longer you wait to evolve your Eevee, the more type-specific level up moves it will miss out on. So the later you evolve it, the more TMs or move reminder trips and heart scales if you're in an older game you have to use to get those type specific moves. What this means is that in Platinum, you're not gonna be able to use a Glaceon on your team until you've made a lot of progress into the story. And in the interim, before you can evolve your Eevee, you're either stuck with using an Eevee, which is not an ice type, or using a completely different ice type, at which point it might make more sense to just keep using that Pokemon. Using Glaceon on your team in Platinum is simply not practical. Sword and Shield solved the Glaceon problem by getting rid of location-based evolutions entirely, replacing them with stone evolutions, which is something I very much appreciate and wish they would have done a heck of a lot sooner. Had to wait so long to get my Vikavolt in Sun and Moon. Ah. So if you want to use Glaceon in Sword and Shield, it's not very hard to do so. In fact, you can have a Glaceon before you even fight the first gym if you get an Ice Stone from the Digging Duo. My concern for BDSP is that they'll revert back to strictly location-based evolutions for these Pokemon, since after all, Diamond and Pearl were the games in which they were introduced. I think this would be a huge mistake since while it wouldn't be a large inconvenience for Leafeon, Magnezone, and Probopass, since their evolution locations are early and accessible, it would be devastating to Glaceon. And while I don't plan to use a Glaceon on my team, I think people who like Glaceon should be able to do so. It would be ridiculous to make it impractical again, even after all this time. An easy way to avoid this would be by making an Ice Stone available much earlier in the game, either found somewhere through the game progression or in the underground, because you can find evolution stones there. Also, they don't have to strictly replace the location evolutions with stone evolutions. They could make both possible. More options is rarely a bad thing. Side note, if they do keep the stone evolutions for location evolving Pokemon, 
What stone would evolve Nose Pass into Probo Pass? The only two location evolution Pokemon that are not in Sword and Shield and therefore did not get stone evolutions are Nose Pass and Crabrawler. And Crabrawler would obviously evolve with an Ice Stone since Crabominable is an Ice type. However, neither Nosepass nor Probopass have a type that's associated with any of the currently existing evolution stones. Aside from the fact that they're rock types and they're all evolution stones. I think the most likely scenario for evolving Nosepass into Probopass is using a Thunderstone, since that's the stone that evolves Chargebug and Magneton, and they evolved in the same magnetic field that Nosepass did. However, if they did this, that would mean that Probopass would be the first not electric type Pokemon to result from the usage of a Thunderstone, which I have no issues with, to be clear. It would just be pretty interesting. Glaceon is not the only Pokemon that I think needs to be made more easily obtainable in the remakes. Another issue I have is with Riolu. The only way to get Riolu in the original Sinnoh games is to get the egg from Riley on Iron Island, which is accessible around the sixth gym when your Pokemon are in their late 30s, early 40s. The egg hatches at level one, which means if you want to use Lucario on your team, you have to grind up a baby level one Riolu 30 plus levels. It's very annoying. I have done it more than once. Lucario is probably the most popular, if not the most popular, not Gen 1 Pokemon. And I really think they need to make it easier for people to get their hands on in the freaking Sinnoh games. They don't need to make it as easy as they did in X and Y where you just get handed one, but I don't know, maybe make the egg obtainable earlier? I will admit I don't feel as strongly about the Lucario situation as I do about the Glaceon. That's why I talked a lot longer about the Glaceon situation. But there is another Sinnoh Pokemon that I think has to be made more easily obtainable because there's only one way to get it in the Sinnoh games and it's one of the rarest Pokemon in the entire main series. Munchlax. I discussed this in more depth in my what is the rarest Pokemon in every game video, so I'll let past me explain this part. The rarest Pokemon is Munchlax. Like the other Pokemon we've discussed so far, it's only found with a 1% encounter rate. However, it goes beyond that because Munchlax is only found on honey trees. If you didn't know, to get Pokemon to show up on honey trees in the Sinnoh games, you have to slather honey on the tree, wait, six whole hours, then come back and check. If you don't check the tree before 24 hours after the Pokemon spawns, whatever's there is gonna disappear. And there's no way to cheese this. Advancing the clock in the DS won't cause time to advance for the honey trees, so you have to wait six hours no matter what. Also, the species of the Pokemon is determined when honey is slathered, not when you come back six hours later. So while you could save in front of the tree to reset for natures or IVs or shininess, once the species is determined, that's what you're getting. As an extra slap in the face, there is a 9% or 10% chance that no Pokemon will show up at all. Six hours, you wait six hours and nothing shows up. Oh, and it actually still gets worse. Of the 21 honey trees in the Sinnoh region, only four can spawn Munchlax. And which four those are is randomized every time you start a new playthrough. So you can't just look up which trees are the Munchlax ones, you just have to figure it out via trial and error with an egregiously time-consuming method. And even if you know the Munchlax trees, it still only has a 1% encounter rate. A spawn rate that low on only four random trees using a method that takes six hours per encounter is just, oh my gosh, that is by far and away the rarest Pokemon we've discussed so far. If you want a Munchlax in these games, just breed a Snorlax. The only problem with breeding a Snorlax is that it's not natively found in the Sinnoh games. Which means that if you don't have access to other games to transfer a Snorlax in, it is darn near impossible to get a Snorlax to use for your playthrough team. And even if you don't want to use it on your playthrough team, you're gonna want it to complete the Pokedex. How I got Munchlax from my Pokedex originally, back in the DS days, was transferring a Snorlax in via Pal Park and breeding it, like I said. However, we don't yet know how Pal Park and just general interaction with other games is gonna work for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. The games are developed by ILCA, ILCA, I'm not really sure, which is the developers of Pokemon Home, which is a strong indication that it will be compatible with Pokemon Home. 
However, we don't know at what point in the story you'll gain access to it. Plus, guys, you shouldn't have to transfer in a Pokemon from another game to use a Pokemon that's in the regional Pokedex. They absolutely must make it so it is not so absurdly difficult to get a freaking Munchlax. If they wanna make Snorlax obtainable separately, that's fine, and you could just breed for a Munchlax. But I really think they should just make it so Munchlax isn't so ridiculously rare on such a time-consuming method. Because a popular Pokemon, Snorlax, should not be so difficult to use on a playthrough team or obtain for your Pokedex. Another issue the original Sinnoh games had that I won't spend too much time discussing because I don't believe it's gonna end up being an issue is how freaking slow they were. It took forever to save, plus just watch this clip. Yeah, that was annoying. The reason this happened is because for every HP point that a Pokemon lost, the same amount of time passed. So if you lost just a couple HP points or the Pokemon was low level, it wasn't that time consuming. But if it was a higher level Pokemon losing a lot of HP, it took way too long. They fixed it in subsequent games, which makes me think it's not gonna be a problem in the remakes, but I just wanted to cover it because I wanted to complain about it because that was ridiculous. The final issue with the original Sinnoh games that I want to discuss is Luxray. Luxray is not an issue. It's how it's treated. I love Luxray. It is incredibly cool and since it's obtainable so early, it becomes the de facto electric type for most Sinnoh teams. The problem it has though, like most physical electric Pokemon, is that its moveset is terrible. As of Sword and Shield, its strongest physical electric move is Wild Charge, which is only 90 base power, does recoil, and doesn't get it until the ridiculous level of 80. The other options are Spark and Thunderfang, which are underwhelming in the power department. Luxray is one of the most popular and widely used Sinnoh Pokemon, yet it's hamstrung by its terrible moveset. I really hope that despite it being mid-generation, they give Luxray and heck, a lot of other physical electric Pokemon, a new physical electric move that's good and reliable. Heck, they could give Zing Zap to more Pokemon and I'd be fine with that. So that covers my issues with the original Sinnoh games and how I hope those issues are remedied in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now let's cover my concerns with the upcoming games, just in general that I have as of now, with my very limited viewpoint of just having seen the original trailer and the original Pokemon Presents presentation. Most of my concerns fit under one umbrella, not utilizing the mechanics and features of newer games. The official site says the original story has been faithfully reproduced, which to me implies that there will be far fewer story changes in this remake than the previous two, Oris and Let's Go, and potentially fewer changes than Fire Red, Leaf Green, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver. I don't mind this one-to-one -one recreation, and I actually think it's the right call to do a closer, faithful remake alongside something totally fresh and new, Legends Arceus. However, the emphasis on faithfully reproduced has me concerned that they're not gonna utilize newer features in an effort to make Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl more like Diamond and Pearl. The big one is HMs. I didn't discuss this in my problems with the original Sinnoh games because I think they're a problem with all the original games prior to their removal in Gen 7. I don't like them because they take up move slots on your Pokemon, they might take up a whole party spot if you decide to use an HM Mule, or they force you to switch your team around a lot, or you wanna use a flying type Pokemon like Gliscor on your team and it can't learn fly, so you lose that freaking option and that's upsetting. The Hoenn and Sinnoh games have the biggest HM problem though. Did you know that it requires five HMs to get through the Sinnoh Victory Road in the original Gen 4 games? You need Rock Climb, Rock Smash, Strength, Surf, and Waterfall. Five. You can't even get by with just one HM mule. It's absurd. You can't solo run. It's, it's so bad. 
No Pokemon game has featured overworld HMs since the start of Gen 7, including the remake Let's Go, which replaced them with secret techniques. I am worried that BDSP will bring HMs back in an attempt to faithfully reproduce the original. I think this would be a huge mistake for the reasons I mentioned earlier about HM sucking. Long story short, I wanna use a Gliscor on my team, but Gliscor cannot learn fly. And I want to be able to use one and still fast travel all the time. Please keep the HMs out. Some other modern conveniences that are not in the original Sinnoh games that I hope are in BDSP are TMs not breaking, the inclusion of experience candies, and the move reminder not requiring heart scales. I think these are just really nice conveniences that make the player experience better, and I think they should be in all Pokemon games for the rest of forever. I should mention that the official site for BDSP does say these remakes include easy to understand player-friendly conveniences of the modern Pokemon series. So that makes me feel more optimistic than I did before reading that line. However, I still have some reservations, not just about modern conveniences, but about features from Platinum being cut. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are somewhat infamous for lacking a big feature that Emerald had, but Ruby and Sapphire did not, the Battle Frontier. One of the coolest aspects of Gen 3 was cut from the Gen 3 remakes, either because of time constraints to be faithful to the original duo or both. I am terrified that this is gonna happen again in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Platinum introduced its own Battle Frontier, which adds many, many hours of post-game content to an already excellent Sinnoh post-game. I am genuinely very worried that the remakes will not include the Platinum Battle Frontier, either to save time or to be more faithful to the original Sinnoh games. I just... God, I just want to play through a Battle Frontier as an adult who knows how to battle Pokemon using the modern battle mechanics. But I haven't been able to do that because the last time there was a game of the Battle Frontier was over 10 years ago. I'm less worried about them not including the Platinum decks because as I mentioned earlier, Porygon Z is shown in the trailer, but I'm really concerned about the Battle Frontier. In short, the more that BDSP take from Platinum as opposed to Diamond and Pearl, the better. And then finally, a few brief thoughts on Legends Arceus, or <clears throat> Arcus. I am very excited for this. I think it's the right call to outsource a simpler remake while the main team works on new experimental types of game. It looks like it will be really fun, but I must admit I have concerns about the graphical performance. Chingling was moving at 10 frames a second or something like that, and the characters didn't look as crisp as I would like them to. We're still probably about a year out from release, so there's lots of times for things to be polished up and cleaned, but I'm just a little bit concerned about that. Regardless though, I'm gonna have a ton of fun with it, I am sure, and I'm really freaking excited for it. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video, so don't forget to pick up an MNJTV plushie at mnjtvmerch.com if you're watching this on the day it came out. Seriously, this is your last freaking chance, so go get one using the link in the description below. And thank you so much for watching! With an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you want to help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all.